Okay, oh, what's that? Oh, what's that? Oh, 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 what's that? Oh, what's that? Hi, I'm Dexter, and let's talk Caribbean genealogy. In this video, I'm going to help you formulate a good research question. It can be really easy to be discouraged when doing your Caribbean genealogy because, well, there's so many different things going on and it can be quite overwhelming really going, going through these record sets. It's never been a better time than now in 2021 to do your Caribbean genealogy research. A lot of the records are available online and you need to be very specific when you sit down and you take your time to go through your research. You've got to have a really clear question written down and you've got to follow that through so that you can then find the information. It can be um, very tempting to be distracted and start looking, oh, what's that? Oh, what's that? Oh, 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 what's that? But if you follow these tips, I think you'll be all right. So first thing, you've got to be specific. Within a family group, you want to make sure that you've completed that group as best as you, you can before moving on to any more information. And you need to look for a particular person and some sort of bit of, of information about that person that you're looking for when you're uh, framing your research question. And the time period that you're doing this research is also crucial. The time period itself is going to let you know if it is in current times, so modern post-1950 um, world, um, or is it before that? And then you then start looking, okay, and is this in the UK or is this not in the UK? Is this in the British Empire or not in the British Empire? So within your research question, you can be really clear about all of these things. And so in my methodology, I've you know defined all of those things and I have it really clear in my mind that this is what I'm searching for. Then you've got to then see that, well, you're looking for a particular piece of information. And at this point, I have to say, you're not looking for a specific document. You're just trying to find information. Let's say, for example, you were trying to find um, your uh, great grandmother's maiden name. And um, you realize that, oh, well, actually, at this point in time, they may or may not have had a birth certificate or the birth certificate may have been created well after the fact. And so that information may or may not be accurate. And so you just need to see, like, was there a baptism record? That sort of thing, you know, and then you can then go through it that way. Uh, but you need to make sure that you just are looking in many different places, at least three, four places. Make notes as you go so that you know where you've searched. You know, very importantly, where you have not found that information, particularly in the records, particular time period, in a particular record set that you've looked at so that you don't end up searching in the same records over and over again because that will drive you mad. You then have to then think about what you already know when you're formulating your question and any oral history that may be able to, to guide you. So research question, what is the, the, the name of the person or the name that we've got now of that person? Um, so I would like to find my great grandmother Mary who was born in St. Michael Parish, Barbados, during the 1850s, so I know this is post-emancipation, and I'm not sure what Mary's ethnicity was. I'm assuming that um, she would have been of African descent, but she could possibly also be something else. I would like to find her maiden name. And what I already know is that Mary married someone with the last name Skerritt and that Skerritt person is going to have had some record of them being married at some point because we've got an approximate birth year of 1850 and then you would expect a marriage to happen sometime in um, 18 to 25 years just about people used to get married a bit earlier then and then so then you're like okay well then I should be looking in the 1870s then and if you've got an idea about any religious affiliations then you can be like oh yeah they were Anglican they were Methodist or whatever then you can then start looking and targeting the record sets that you're searching for but being really specific I was just looking for the maiden name of this particular ancestor that lived in this particular place and I've then searched 
these records and I've made notes. And as I've gone along, I've made a note of what type of records um, I um, was, was searching through. While you're doing your research, sometimes you can go off track and some, or sometimes something quite exciting just pops up in the records. Uh, but try to stay focused and um, at least um, if you are going to be distracted, just make a little note uh, about the documents that you're currently looking at and make sure that you get the citation for the source and make a really clear note about, about that for yourself and for anyone else that may come down the line um, who may not um, you know, know it as well as you do. You need to um, just let this be something that is going to live on or well after you. And so this is where you then have to think about um, the types of records to know the validity of the information or how much you can trust it. Now, the information that you get when you're doing your formulating your, your research question, you've got to consider, um, well, where do I expect to find some of this information? And then you've got to then consider, will I be able to find this in a primary record or a secondary record? Primary information, it's coming from someone that was there when it went down. <laughs> and they were like, oh yes, I was there and this happened and that happened. And, um, yeah, they can tell you the story because they were there, they saw it, they were a witness. The secondary information, it's from, from people that weren't read, that weren't there. And so um, if you, a lot of oral, oral history is secondary information. And um, that's why you've always got to, to cross check and see if there are any um, records that you can find to um, support or refute that information. If you only have secondary information, how much of the secondary information is um, derivative in source or primary in source because if there's someone that was there that told you that this is what happened but it's just not in a the record then that's maybe a little bit more of a, a, a good clue but you really have to then analyze the the records and try to make sense for yourself before you accept any information that you find in your search so original versus derivative sources this just means how close to the time that the event occurred that this event was recorded in that record so if you've got an original source this was happened pretty close to the time that this um, event occurred so the, the classic one is in the baptism record a child was born um, two months ago and we've got a date of birth everyone present is um, there and, and the child was recently born so everyone knows the, the date so that date is probably going to be uh, maybe more accurate than the marriage record um, if people were not literate then yeah it, it may then drift and so sometimes the that you get a mismatch between um, the, the ages for that reason derivative sources are just things that had been done later after an event occurred and um, you just need to just check um, when was a document um, generated, um, do you think, in terms of the event that you are searching for? So if you're looking for a maiden name, the obvious place would be on a marriage record. And if you can find a marriage record um, that has the maiden name, then you can then cross-check the information that if there is an age given and father's name, hopefully father's name is given, Sometimes they aren't, but um, you can then go and look in the appropriate year corresponding to the age that was given on the record of the marriage in order to then see if you can find the baptism record, which would then have the name of the father and mother if they were married. Um, if um, they were not married, then they will just be the name of the mother. And in some cases, um, this will also be then a different name. So a good strategy is when you're searching through the records, you've got to sometimes just search purely by the first name at that point in time. And you may already know the name of um, the parents from oral history that you may be able to connect and then cross check with other records. But um, this can be a little bit tricky and sometimes it takes more time than you um, like it to. But you know, this is just what it is. So those are my tips for formulating an effective research question. If you like this video, please share it, comment and let me know if there's anything that you want me to do a video on. And I will see you next time. Bye.